Hello and welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm your host, Aaron Halevi. This week we have a bumper-filled program with an exploration of the Jewish Museum of Music, a visit to an animation studio in Israel focused on producing Jewish content, and we close off with the serenity of a yoga class with a difference. The Music Square project in the heart of Jerusalem is the answer to a growing cultural and spiritual need of people worldwide who are interested in connecting with Jewish music. The collections housed within the Jewish Museum of Music include manuscripts, musical instruments, visual arts and ethnic costumes, each representing the folklore of unique Jewish diaspora communities. It starts four years ago when I decided to make this museum with, with the owner, Laurent Levy. He was for me as a back for my faith to do a place that's going to rise a ratzon, a will, in Am Israel. Because we believe if there will be a will in each one in his heart, the third temple will be built. So how do we make a will in a person? By music. The will, ratzon, come to the person by what he hear. The music he will hear, this is what make him ratzon, a will. So I went to collect instruments, music, each place, the music that represent the place of it. And I start collect instrument by instrument. I collect 260 instruments for all kinds of places in the world. And I start uh, save them here in the Kikara Musica in Israel, Jerusalem. I didn't play all of the instruments because I'm these 260 <laughs> instruments here, and each one of them is, you have the experience and the knowledge how to play them. And most of them are original, but I don't play all of the instruments. I can show you one instrument that I play. The name of it is Ancient Santerin, Santerin Mikra'i, or what they called it today, Iranic Santur, Santur. Andalusia, Spain, and Morocco. We brought the ceiling from Morocco. It took me one and a half year of a sculpture that made it for me in the King Factory. By the music that I went to Morocco, it opened doors, and uh, all kinds of angels opened us another doors, and we reached to this special factory of the king uh, through the music. The special instrument like here, a Moroccan, more tribal, more rhythmic. Uh, the music spread to four places in the body and in the roots. Like, there's four elements. Earth, water, fire element, air. So in the music as well, the air is the flutes, all the flutes. The earth, it's the heart, it's all the rhythm section. All the string is the, is the water, and the fire is all the bow. You touch the strings. And the instrument like this, and inside of our heart, it's like a full harmony. All the time we go with all these elements, and we're hearing them. Our will change by, by what, the will, what, what we hear. So if we will hear, correct movement of music, our will will spread up and rise up. This is like one of instruments that represent the air in the elements. It's all the instruments that you have to blow into it, your, your heart, you have to blow the inside of you outside, like even this. This is the European uh, Ashkenaz uh, room. Uh, this room represents uh, the 
all kind of instruments and music that came from Europe, Ashkenaz. Uh, after which we call it in the 16th century, uh, the ancient of the Baal Shem Tov, Kleismer. But you can see all kinds of special instruments called lira, European lira, or mandolin, or all kinds of pentatonic things. Uh, although you can see lautot and mandocello, all kind of mixing with music. We know the, the music, the European Ashkenaz music, as the Hasidic music, but it's starting only from the 16th century. This is the Africa Yaman place in our museum room. It represents the Yaman and African music. You know, the Yaman, when they finished, like, let's say, the Yaman after the first exile of the first temple, they never came back. 2,000 years. They didn't come back for the second temple. And they stayed there because they believed that the second temple will be not right, it will be ruled. So there is no meaning to come back. They will come back only when the third temple will come and Israel will be. And they came back 40 years ago to Israel. The Yaman took from the temple, they took the halacha that not allowed to play music. So the, the, the Yaman doesn't play on harmonic instruments or melodies. They play only on drums, because after uh, the first temple ruled, they promised they will never play in a harmonic instruments. So they have drums, or pach, they call it tanake. And they sing and they dance. So this is the Yaman place. Now they came back waiting for Mashiach. This is the Iraq, Khaleb, Surya room. Uh, there's all kinds of ancient instruments, although Indian instruments we have here. Uh, this is why, because uh, a lot of uh, Jewish lived in India, in Kuchin and in Calcutta, Iraqi one. Uh, the music that they preserved in the Bakashot music, they had a lot of the Khalabi music in the Mesek, around Tsuva music special instruments, although we have very instrument, ancient instrument like 3,000 years ago. It's a Babylon harp from Ashur. Uh, this is the way they used to play on it. You can see a lot of the instrument like this, like the rabab or the oud or the, the harp. It's strings that stretch on a wood. Uh, this is the type, the ancient type of, of harp in the, this ancient uh, period of, of music. This room, we made it handmade with, with a brush. It took for almost the three months of painting this room. This uh, part is the in the museum is the diamond part. This is the only place you can go inside the temple in augmented reality in the world. What she see now, she now inside of the temple for a journey. And uh, it's very special because usually when somebody go inside to the temple, to the temple, you know what he wants now. He can see it, he can feel it. The museum is about a will, about Beit HaMikdash. The purpose of the museum is the work of the levies, because the owner is levy, and as you know, I'm levy from father and mother, and the instrument I play is a levy instrument. You have to understand, in the temple, the levies wasn't uh, standing on the stage, and there were the performers, like today. The work of the levies was to open the heart of the people that bring sacrifice for God. The, the work of the Levites is to find the thing they are missing and touch it by the music. So the music wasn't the stage, the music was instrument to touch your heart and to meet with yourself, with your good in yourself. The music preserves us as a community. The music preserves us 
as a family, in Shulchan Shabbat, we're singing. When you go to the synagogue, we're singing in the Beit Knesset. The Torah, we sing the Torah. We don't read it. We have to sing the Torah. Vezot Ashira. We, after it, in all kinds of community, in the holidays, everything is with Shira, with music. The music is like a, a circle of the, it's holding us together. And she, it's holding us together for 2,000 years. And now the melody is, come back to Israel. <laughs> Welcome back. In his short life, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov achieved much acclaim, both as a teacher and a spiritual leader. His brilliant parables contain a number of inspiring messages, and now a group of Israeli animators are bringing them to life in a series of animated stories. The Simcha team popped into the studio to see how this lengthy process works and the reason behind taking on this mammoth task. Rabbi Nachman's stories are very powerful and they have a message that any person in the world, Jew and non-Jew alike, could benefit from these uh, stories. What is needed is a medium to bring these stories to the people. Breast of Research Institute is now embarking on this project animation where we will take Rabbi Nachman's stories and uh, produce them in animated form. One of the things Rabbi Nachman always spoke about, the power of the imagination, for good or otherwise. So if we do live action, where you use people for the actors and whatnot, there's a certain limitation that you have. However, with animation, you can use your full imagination to bring forth the story and the message in the finest detail that is possible. Here at Iran Productions, this is where all the magic happens. Every movie begins with a script, but when you come to do an animated movie, every second counts. So you have to, first of all, storyboard everything, and this is where the storyboarding happens. So the first thing I do, I take just a uh, paper, and I start drawing some thumbnails. So in the beginning, it's very, very rough, uh, as you can see, just ideas. It's quickly, while I'm talking to El Dad, I'll be drawing some stuff so we can just uh, flash out all our uh, visual ideas for, for the story. And then I take these thumbnails and I put them here in the computer and I make them look even better. All the pictures that he's creating at the end will become a video board that gives us a reference and a guideline for continuity, for duration, for timing. And every shot is very, very carefully planned. Our next station over here is the concept art station. Sandra over here, she basically explores the visual language of the film. She looks at every little detail of the film and starts molding the visual language of the film. It begins with the concept art that starts as a reference. The reference turns to sketches that she sketches out. Once we write a sketch, she gives a little different <laughs> poses, and then we give it coloring, textures, and slowly, slowly, we get a feel for what the character looks like, and then the rest of the characters come into that same world, and the same goes for locations, until we find the basic concept art of the film with the visual language of where the film happens. The amount of exploration that went into this film is phenomenal, because every gesture, every way, every eyebrow, every curve of the king's body, of the fixer's home, of the of the person they're talking to, of the way the world that they live in, everything, that, everything really makes such an effect on the meaning of the story. And we really tried as best as we can, of course, with Rabbi Kramer's help and guidance, to stay true and hope that the message reaches the people just like Rabbi Nachman wanted it, because we truly believe that Rabbi Nachman planted seeds over here for the whole of humanity to benefit from. It was a period of time that Rabbi Nachman would speak his Torah teachings, his lessons, discourses. They're very complicated. They're very uh, 
intertwined with many different things that were taking place in the world at his time. And uh, he said, you know, I see that my teachings are not really reaching you. I'm going to tell stories. And he began teaching many, many stories. He began telling many stories. And he said, there are people who sleep away their lives. They could sleep away their lives for many years. For 70 years, they could sleep away their life. 70 years, no, it was a whole lifetime. They could sleep away. I, people tell stories, he said. People tell stories to put people to sleep. I tell stories to wake them up, right? The stories I tell you are stories that are supposed to reach you and enter your mind and heart and kind of make you feel that you have purpose in your life. He says, without having the feeling of life, you could live life or you could exist life. Rabbi Nachman wants us to have every moment of our life filled with life, with joy, with happiness, with feeling, with energy. And so he began telling stories. The next phase is animation. Animation is actually moving, giving life into the whole process. And it's gotta make sure every piece, every hand gesture is right, every eyebrow gesture is right. It's a very, very nitpicky work that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and really trying to mimic the real life movement of a violinist in this case. Like an old puppeteer, but now using uh, computer technology, everything comes to life. After the animator gives life to the whole process and gives life to the movement of the characters, the compositor over here gives the real live feeling to the picture by adding layers and layers of smoke, of glow, of real colors, and then making the picture look like real life as a real 3D image. Rebinachmus teachings reach everybody. If you look at it carefully, it has something for your heart. Religious, non-religious, Jewish, non-Jewish, it doesn't matter. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Everybody knows that, right? Shema Yisrael, Rashi says, listen, because Hashem, Shehu Elokeinu, He is our God now, Hu Yihia Hashem Echod. He will be the God for the entire world. How do you get Hashem Echod to everybody? How? If we're a few hundred thousand Jews, there's 15 million Jews in the world. Hey, how are you going to reach the 15 million? But there's 7 billion people on the planet. How are you going to reach 7 billion? And this is the way to do it. And that's why I care. The message of the film, the message by Rabbi Nachman, I really believe that this message can change the world, can give a lot of emuna to a lot of people in the world. And uh, for me, it was uh, kind of closing the circle because since I became a Baltruva, people knew that I was coming from the world of movies. They told me, you have to make a movie out of Rabbi Nachman's stories. But there was never enough money and there was never a good budget for it and there was never, the time wasn't right. And now it all came together and I think that it's a huge privilege and an honor for me to be a part of this amazing project. Maintaining a balance of mind, body and soul is not always easy, especially when you consider the many challenges that we face on a daily basis. The International Center for Tzfat Kabbalah hosts regular yoga sessions for women who are looking for spiritual upliftment and a healthy well-being. First of all, I'm working with women, women, only women, which is different uh, yoga, okay, it's more for the women structure also body and also uh, emotionally and spiritually uh, I feel that women are very stressed I uh, had a lot of things to deal with very very multitasking okay so I'm trying to find a place to let the women just 
first of all, to relax. First of all, get connected to the breathing, which usually we don't breathe right. So first of all, just to relax and breathe. And then we can find uh, the way between breathing to the practice, the physical practice, uh, it comes more um, whole, right? So, so when they go home after, they are much more relaxed, much more uh, powerful, happier, especially the children and the husband, they need her. And if she's happy and she's relaxed and she's strong, body and soul, it's good for everyone. So that's what I'm trying to give these women that come, th those women that come to the class. When you have stress and you don't find yourself, first of all, you know that you can breathe and you know how to breathe, which, which we get here, the, the tools how to breathe. Okay, great. And the other way, thing that I think is very important to know how to work with the body. We, we do a lot of things with the body. We, we wash dishes and we, we take up the children and we need to, we nurse and we, we, we take the shops, the bags, everything. We work hard with the body. And if we know how to, to hold the body right, yeah, we can, we can uh, stay, maintain it young and strong for, for years and not to damage, damage it with, I think that that's a very important thing. I see, I see the girls, I see the women, how much, a lot of pressure, a lot of tense. And uh, I, I'm happy to see when it's suddenly the, the body changes. I see the body changes through the practice. And I'm really happy. They, they are more calm, they are more stretched, uh, more relaxed, they, can, they are more uh, flexible. So when we breathe to the breast, it's a very surface uh, breathing, which not allowing us to be um, calm. It, it's like it stays just on the surface. And when we, breathe, when we breathe down to the stomach and we let the organs get the air, okay? Inner organs get the air. And also I use the image as a balloon that goes from like you feel it from down up, so then you can feel everything opens. And I, I feel it much, all the body gets the air. Even if it just stays, yeah, just the lungs get the air, but you feel the whole body gets the air. And it really relaxes. And it can make you get more, when you, as more as you relax, you feel more flexible. And we see it, so you can stay in a position just to stay, you don't need to do much, but when you stay in a position and you breathe and you relax, suddenly you see that you're very flexible, that everything opens. I take from the yoga the physical part and I bring the Jewish part of the spirituality. So we try to take the, um, the focus, yeah, to, to, to be more aware to our soul, uh, we can use Hebrew names, like Hashem names, God names, different aspects of it, different powers that affect us, okay? So we can observe it. And we use it through the breathing, with the practice, the physical practice, and the observation inside. Gives us um, a holy experience. And then we are more uh, relaxed, happy, uh, nice women to our family, which is, for me, it's very important to give that to women. Well, that's all we have for this week's episode of Simcha, a celebration of life. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so please send us a message on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions. From me, Aaron Halevi, and the rest of the Simcha team, have a great week ahead. Shavua Tov.